Hello there and welcome to Nintendo Nightly, your Monday through Friday source for everything Nintendo. My name is Michael Cottrell, your host, and today on the show, I got a hot take! A hot take on a game that I played for about an hour and a half. Just wanted to give you some quick impressions. Uh, I will get further into the game, update you on some of those. But for now, let's talk about Aegis Defenders. And what bit, you, you might be asking... What is Aegis Defenders? Well, I'll tell you. Aegis Defenders is a Humble Bundle published, kickstarted new release for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Steam. A couple things to note there. Yes, this one is uh, kickstarted and then and then published. Uh, and yes, this is an actual new Switch game instead of it being a port of a game that came to PS4 or whatever. Uh, interesting thing to note here. Humble Bundle publishing this means that you know they they recently got out by got bought out by IGN Entertainment which of course owns IGN and some other editorial websites so it's kind of weird you know the muddies the waters for for those things for the same people reviewing games to also be making them but i think IGN uh, has not published a review for the game i respect that i respect that you got to you got to not not play that game. Don't play that game, IGN. Do not play that game. The other weird part, though, is the do kind of kind of promote it. They kind of promote it, and this is just the weird place you put yourself in when you publish games, but also write news about them. Like it's 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 uh it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. But in any case, let's get into the game uh, and not the uh, ethical the ethical boundaries, the eth ethical minefield that IGN finds themselves in. Uh, let's dive into the game. Just what is Aegis Defenders? Aegis Defenders is, uh, like, you, like you might expect, an indie game that takes inspiration from the Super Nintendo era, but don't don't hang up on the podcast just yet. It gets a little better. Uh, so it does borrow from your typical sources, your Metroids, your Zeldas, your yada, yada, yada. Don't want to talk to so much about that part. I want to talk about the nice blend between side-scrolling and platforming and um, tower defense that this game has. So this game will always, the levels will start in a side-scrolling function. And this is the developer's opportunity to kind of teach you how different things in the game work. Uh, switches and different types of terrain, things like that. And uh, so you'll get you'll you'll sort of gather your bearings as you make your way through the level. There's collectibles that that go toward uh, getting different um, in-game upgrades and, and things like that. And then it'll end with a tower defense segment. And the tower defense segment is uh, pretty tense. Monsters will charge from a bunch of different directions based on which sort of pipes they're going through. And you've got 60 seconds to prepare each time there's a new wave and uh, they incentivize moving a little quicker. You can you can um, end your prep time early uh, in exchange for some extra money, which is nice. I like that they incentivize a better play. Then uh, every stage will end in a camp segment where you'll have the chance to upgrade your abilities, talk to different characters in the campsite, uh, move along the story, and it all starts over again. So how is it? Not too shabby, not too shabby. The side-scrolling platforming is not particularly incredible. It, it's more of the way in which you move than the, the challenge of the game. The challenge of the game is definitely wrapped up in the tower defense. Uh, and it's kind of cool that by hitting certain jumps and uh, by solving certain puzzles, you can be better ready for the tower defense segment and better prepared to upgrade your characters once you get to the campsite. But that part's not going to, you know... Not gonna, not gonna set you aflame. Uh, so far in the game, I haven't gotten to the point where I'm controlling more than two characters, but that's where um, you can kind of, in the tower defense segment, set your characters in different places, and if it is a attacking character, they will attack the, the wave of enemies based on where you place them, and then there's a, another character who sets up turrets and repairs stuff, and that's been my favorite guy to play. I like, uh, I like his tool set, and through the customization options that are available, you can choose who to upgrade, how to upgrade them. So I got the um, the old guy a shovel that breaks down resources faster. That seemed like a, a cool thing to get. And then I got, uh, he, he has a cameo item that is pretty special to me. So I went ahead and grabbed that too. And 
You can also buy uh, different skills and upgrade different skills, so I've been investing heavily into the turrets. You know, what's a tower defense game without turrets? You know? You know. You know. The one gripe I have with the game is that the D-pad... I was playing this on the Pro Controller with the D-pad, which, you know, it's a side-scrolling game of the uh, cut of the Super Nintendo cloth, and whenever you hit up, your character stops. Whether they're running, jumping, whatever. They, they just stop dead in their tracks. And sometimes I would accidentally press the up button just by, like, sort of holding right and jumping. And, I mean, it could be me, it could be the Pro Controller, but it happened a lot of times where I was, like, trying to make a jump and then it sort of just stopped halfway because I was uh, leaning up a little bit on the control stick. It feels like this was made for a PC first, with uh, particular keys for which way that you want to jump rather than a, a d-pad that can uh, process different directions also there's there are sort of diagonal shots that you can do in the game but I, your character has to stand stationary when when you do them so that's it's kind of weird not gonna lie I I would say that you you're not gonna have the same problem on the joy-con controllers because of course the d-pad is separated there but it's weird that a side-scrolling game in part works better on a joystick than a uh, Super Nintendo like pad but besides that, I, you know, it could be something that, that they fix, and I can just switch controllers and I'll probably be fine. But it's it, it's just kind of it's kind of weird. And the UI as well, it seems like it was built for a PC and then and then kind of hastily ported to the Switch, which is probably what we got. And I'm okay with that, honestly. I'm okay with it with a little bit of uh, things to, to kind of look over. I mean, it's not darkest dungeon levels of hard to control, but... You know, it's it's not too not too shabby. I would say, however, that playing controlling multiple characters with one controller is it's it's about as clunky as it sounds. And you can, I mean, the, you don't have like robust sort of commands to to give the characters. You pretty much just tell them to stay here, and then they'll they'll act on their own AI. They will shoot or they will repair. Uh, they'll stand straight in front of monsters and just get hit by them. And then when the, the monsters pass, they'll just kind of let them by. And uh, so I, I think the best way that this game can be played is in the co-op segment. Um, also, the puzzle solving is a lot a lot more fluid. And the, there's not so much kind of pausing and maneuvering around between characters when you do that. And so I think uh, I think that this game is, is good. I think it's uh, it's it's worth checking out if it looks interesting to you. I don't think you're gonna feel like you were ripped off. It's twenty dollars, which is a little more expensive than your average indie game. It's probably gonna be cheaper on Steam in a couple months. So if price is really a deal breaker for you, then maybe pick it up on that platform. But as with everything on Switch, you can take it portably, and so that's that's what I'll be doing, uh, playing it a little bit. Portable over the weekend, or my family, you know, sitting on the couch, they're watching uh, whatever new Disney movie's coming out. I, I have a kid. Uh, and, you know, I can play a little bit on the Switch. That's what's the magic of the Nintendo Switch. So in short, the game's not super complicated, but it's fun. And if you're looking for something new on the Switch that's, that's you know, has that retro flair, there's plenty on the platform for you to check out. Uh, you know, I'd say if you don't have anything, then you might check out Shovel Knight. Um, but if you're looking for, for something that is among this, this sort of game, then uh, check this out. I'd love to know what you think of the game, if you have played it, or um, just, you know, any comments or, or so in general. You can find me either in the comments section of YouTube or on thebentoblock.com slash Nintendo Nightly. And... If you check out thebentoblock.com in general, you can see the other work that we do. We we do a conversational podcast. We do uh, the Bento Block uh, presents uh, its own YouTube channel with uh, very curated, scripted video essays on things. Don't have anything on video games there yet, but if you're interested, uh, you can check some of that stuff out on the annotations in the screen or the links in the description. But thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time uh, Monday for some more Nintendo Nightly.